Welcome to another presentation of Madison Square Garden production. Tonight from the Superdome in New Orleans, the Knicks face the New Orleans Jazz. Good evening, everyone. I'm Andy Musser, along with Cal Ramsey here in the Superdome. And tonight, the Knicks are facing the New Orleans Jazz. And, of course, that spells Pete Maravich. He had the biggest single game of anybody against the Knicks this year, 39 points. Who's going to stop him, Cal? I don't know who's going to stop him, but I think Clyde might get the assignment. Maravich plays playing great basketball, particularly here at home. But Walt Frazier has come along for New York in recent ball games. He's playing very strong defense, and he's scoring well. That should be the matchup to watch tonight. Jim Gordon and Bill Chadwick will be on hand to send you that one. Number 27 is Dick Pavetta. Number 6 is Don Murphy. They will work the game here tonight. Pavetta and Murphy worked an earlier game this season between the Knicks and the Jazz. Well, two key matchups once again. Pistol Pete against Walt Frazier. I'm sure Platt will get the assignment of picking him up. <laughs> Earl just said that's nice. <laughs> and uh, E.C. Coleman goes defensively against Bob McAdoo. And, of course, E.C. is one of the final defensive forwards in basketball, and McAdoo, one of the great offensive ball players in the game. So that should be a good matchup when they do hook up. Bob McAdoo scored 36 points the last time the Knicks played here, but the Knicks lost that game, 111-102 on January 23rd. Then Mack came back with 27 points on Tuesday night at the Garden. There's the pistol. He has really had some outstanding games against the Knicks. One time last year, the pistol pumped in 45 in a double overtime game last year. Otto Moore and Bob McAdoo to jump it up. Don Murphy to put the ball in the air, and we are underway as Frazier wins the tip. So the next play, and Frazier goes in underneath Maravich, pass it back between the legs of McAdoo, and picked up by McElroy and up to Maravich. Pistol down to McElroy, drives the baseline, a reach around is hung short. Tom McMillan gets the rebound. And Cal, you said he was in there to give the Knicks some extra power on the board. Yes, Tommy's a very good offensive rebounder. Here's Tommy Mack with the ball, giving it back to Monroe. Pearl starts down the middle, feeds to the baseline. A Tom McMillan jump shot is good, and the Knicks break on top, two to nothing. And you know that Tommy's a real good shooter once he gets himself set out there. He got a good pass from Monroe that time in a real good shooting position. James McElroy in and out of the starting lineup for New Orleans this year, but back in since the injury to Freddie Boyd, and he's going to have surgery on a right knee in just a couple of days. That shot would not fall for Moore. And here come the Knicks. Frazier on the dribble against McElroy, a fine defensive guard. McAdoo pitches back to Monroe and gets it back to Big Bob. Here's his shot over Otto Moore, and he is hit. Well, Knicks did a lot of switching on defense in that game against Atlanta, and I'm sure it's that again this evening because they set a lot of picks out there for Pete Maravich. McElroy fakes the stutter move. Here is a pass off from to the baseline. That is good by the Pistol as he gets his first field goal and a foul on Tom McMillan. Well, that time Pistol moving without the basketball. He comes along the baseline. Clyde gets caught behind the screen. You'll watch here. McMillan switches over to help out. McAdoo switches over to help out. And the foul is called. I didn't see who hit him, but they call the foul. And the free throw was good. So that's a three-point play for Maravich. And the Knicks lead is cut to one at four to three. Frazier tied up at the baseline. No shooting room on Pistol Pete. Bails it back to Monroe. Catches Tom McMillan on the move. He goes to McAdoo. Bob at the baseline feeds into the middle. That was a bad pass. Intercepted by New Orleans. Griffin on a pass to Maravich. Monroe picks him up. The pistol fires. A little bit long over the top. That's going to be Stallworth on the foul. Stallworth coming over the top on the offensive boards. But Stallworth played a surprisingly good game against the Knicks in the Garden. He scored 21 points, which at that time was a season's high. And Stallworth came back to get 26th against Milwaukee the next night. He had a good shooting first quarter against the Knicks. A turnaround by Frazier. It is no good. Rebound on the move by Stallworth. Out to McElroy, who runs the ball club. McElroy, a stutter move. Bail it back to Griffin. Here's Griffin's jump shot. Good by the rookie, Paul Griffin. A fifth-round draft choice from Western Michigan. And that puts the Jazz up for the first time. It's 5-4. to four. Traveling on Monroe. Red Holzman arguing on that play, as you can clearly see. And I thought there's going to be a foul call on that play instead of a traveling violation. Three early turnovers on the Knicks. All of a sudden, in the last couple of games, the Knicks have been plagued again by turnovers, and now the Jazz give it up. Turnover number one on New Orleans. This building seats 21,395 under a reserve seating basis, but they've had several crowds larger than that. Here's 
McAdoo firing it up. It is no good. McElroy for the rebound, and the Knicks are not getting any second chances. But Rose steals the ball. The Pearl picks the pocket. Now he has to wait for his teammates to come back. They've gone back on defense. Here's Frazier's shot. It is no good. And Otto Moore gets the board. Uh, the Knicks shooting cold right now. They're getting very good shots, but they're not falling for them. Ryan almost gets a steal at midcourt. Here's a Maravich bomb, and it's good. Pistol Pete. And he's got five points already, and New Orleans now by three. That's seven to four. Seven straight points for New Orleans, and a foul on Bob McAdoo as the Knicks give it up. Uh, Mac foul. McAdoo called for moving when he set a pick along the baseline. That's two personal fouls on him already. McElroy studies the drive and moves on it. His reach around is good. And nine straight points have been scored by New Orleans. It's a 9-4 New Orleans lead, and Red Holzman will take a timeout. With 8.41 left in the first quarter, the score now, the Jazz 9 and the Knicks 4. Knicks scored the first four points in the ball game. The Jazz comes roaring back with nine, so it's nine to four. The Knicks have had good shots on offense, but they haven't fallen for them, and they're not getting any offensive rebounds after they missed those shots. Hey, speaking of swings, when these two teams met at the Garden on Tuesday night, there was a 38-point swing at that game. So that was really remarkable. The uh, Knicks were down by a dozen, came back to lead by 26, and they won it by 17. Moving into the baseline is Frazier. He's got a switch and he's on Griffin. Pistol picks him up as he moves to the middle. Back off to Tom McMillan for the jumper with two seconds on the timer. They beat the clock. Tommy just beat the buzzer on that shot. Second basket for Tom McMillan, who got a start tonight. The Jazz leads it 9-6. to six. And Tommy's matched up against the rookie. Griffin has done a good job rebounding. That's a charge on Pistol Pete. First foul on Maravich and will charge the Jazz with a turnover on that play. So the Knicks with four turnovers and the Jazz with three. Now the Knicks after tonight come back and play three consecutive home games. The Pacers have lost two straight as they come in. And on Tuesday night it'll be San Antonio and Tommy Mack comes back to hit another long one. Tommy's looking to make a pass in that play, but McMillan was picked up by a defender, so Tommy went up with the shot. He was wide open and he connected. That's nine to eight favor the Jazz by one. A week from Saturday, the Knicks will be at the Garden to play the Philadelphia 76ers. Runaway leaders in the Atlantic Division right now. But Stallworth's shot would not fall, and the Knicks have the rebound. Monroe advancing along the right sideline against McElroy, reaching for the ball. Here's Tom McMillan, who's hit two straight. Monroe moving to the middle, gets in the lane, goes with his two-handed scoop, no good. Rebound, Stallworth knocked away, stolen by Monroe. Monroe gets his second steal. He was lucky on that one. Here's McAdoo's shot, no good. And the rebound got away from Moore, but the Jazz has it anyway. 7.15 remaining in the quarter. McElroy really took it right to the hoop. Oh, he made some move that time. He faked to his left and came back to his right and made a great move going inside for the layup. You watch him now coming back to his right and going in for the layup. Good play by Jim McElroy. Right now we've got nine of 11 points out of the Jazz backcourt. A double pump by Monroe and he hits the Pearl with his first basket of the game. Earl averaging 19.7 for ball game. Jazz by one, 11 to 10. So they've been getting the scoring from the guards as you would expect with this team. Here's Stallworth moving in for a jump shot. It is short of the mark. Frazier for the rebound. Jimmy McMillan had gotten out quickly. Let's see if Clyde goes to him. Here's a Frazier jump shot. It is off the back iron. No good. Maravich rebound. The pistol, who is about set to negotiate a new contract with New Orleans, hits and scores. Seven points for Pistol. He's in pretty good negotiating position, too, leading the league in scoring right now. Well, that's right, and of course the injury to Gail Goodrich, which has disabled him for the year, and at Gail's age, they don't know whether he's going to be able to come back or not. Tommy Mack short. Bob McAdoo around and no good. Tom McMillan misses a follow and Stallworth rebound. Knicks with three shots that almost fell, and in the final analysis, none did. New Orleans leads at 13 to 10. We're in the opening quarter. After the game, the Knicks have a charter flight back to New York. Here's a Maravich shot of the lane. It's good. Well, the Knicks are having a tough time defending against Pistol Pete right now. Clyde is guarding him, but he's going to have to get help from the big man when he makes his move down the lane. We have a whistle before that move by Tom McMillan. 
A foul before the shot on Stallworth. That's his second personal foul. By the way, speaking of travel, we were talking last night about the Knicks having to rush to catch a plane. Well, just in case you gave that any further thought, needless to say, they missed that airplane. And they didn't get into the hotel in New Orleans till about 3 this morning after taking a later flight. McAdoo to the hoop, and he hangs it short. Otto Moore rebounds it out to Maravich. Pistol moving up the center, going with a jump shot. No, but a foul Monroe, and the Pearl does not believe it. Well, the Jazz running with every opportunity now. They're controlling their defensive boards. The Knicks aren't getting any offensive rebounds, and the Jazz coming up running every time, and Pistol likes to handle the ball in the fast break. Maravich, an 83% free throw shooter, going to the line for the second time. He is one for one. That's the first foul on Monroe. Red Holzman is screaming at Don Murphy. He says that Maravich jumped right into the defending ball player on Monroe. But the call didn't go that way. A 17-10 New Orleans lead, a foul on James McElroy. This is the largest lead for New Orleans right now. First foul on McElroy. The Jazz with three team fouls. The Knicks have two team fouls. Here's Frazier moving on Maravich and can't get any room. Goes to Monroe. The Pearl knocked away by Griffin. Griffin helping out. He was actually guarding a forward, but he knocked that ball away. Here's Griffin, the rookie, moves in, dishes off McElroy. Oh, the crowd wanted that shot because the Jazz was playing good basketball. They moved the ball very well in that sequence. Red Holzman is readying Butch Beard to come into the game. Here's a New Orleans foul coming in, and that's Walt Frazier at his best. He actually forced that foul. And Pistol was pretty upset with that call because he said that Walt Frazier moved into him. Clyde made a good move to fake to get him up in the air, and then he got the contact, threw the ball up. He'll shoot too. Well, Butch was coming in for Frazier, so he'll have to wait. As Clyde goes to the foul line, Clyde hitting at 73%. Last night at the line, Clyde was one for six. He played a great game, but he really had trouble on the charity strike. And that's rather unusual. Here is one of the finest defensive forwards in basketball. Number 12, E.C. Coleman. After a two-game layoff, Coleman was out with a bruised right knee, but he's back tonight. Two for two is Frazier. And the Knicks cut their deficit to five. It is 17 to 10. Pistol up on Clyde. Cross to Coleman. Here's a jump shot by Stallworth. In and out. Rebound McAdoo. Knicks with a chance to cut further into this deficit. At the outset of the game, the Knicks scored the first four points, then fell behind 9-4. to four. Frazier's shot is no good. Stallworth clears it out. You know, Clyde shot very well last night, but he's having a very difficult time here in this first quarter with his shooting. Frazier was 12 out of 17 last night. Stallworth moves in great position, but it doesn't count. A charging foul will go. But Stallworth gets called on the foul. He's got three fouls already. Now Butch Beard has a chance to come in. Frazier to the bench. And Butch will go defensively now against Pete Maravich. You notice the Jazz are using E.C. Coleman defensively against Tom McMillan, keeping Otto Moore on uh, Big Bob McAdoo. Just over four minutes remaining in the opening quarter from the Superdome in New Orleans. Down the McAdoo low post. He takes the baseline. One more. It's good and a foul on Otto Moore. A possible three-point play coming up. Well, that's a strong move by Bob McAdoo going baseline that time. He had almost no room at all. Let's watch it again. As McAdoo gets the ball, he posts down low now, comes baseline, using his quickness here, coming underneath and gets the layup and he'll shoot one. And he completes that for a three-point play. Right, he makes the foul, and so McAdoo with five points, and the Jazz in the penalty now, so he would have had an extra try had he not made it. It's 17-14, New Orleans on top. 3.50 left in quarter number one. Pete Maravich. Good. Maravich in his seventh year from LSU. Boy, he is an offensive machine. 13 points in the quarter already. 13 of 19 for New Orleans. McAdoo. Seven for Big Bob. Jazz on top by just two, 19 to 17. That last play by Maravich, Tom McMillan came over to help Butch Beard out, and they were both all over him, and he still got that shot in. A drive by Williams, pitch it off. Here's a jumper at the baseline, good by Otto Moore. He didn't score very much. Otto averaging just 6.2 a ball game, and he was picked up by the Jazz as a free agent. McAdoo, a jump shot from the right lane is good. 
And McAdoo now has nine points to lead the Knicks. You might see McAdoo switching off a lot on defense because Otto is not a real offensive threat, but if you give him a short jump shot, he'll make it. But McAdoo can gamble against him and help his teammates out. E.C. Coleman to the middle, and Maravich, he's double-teamed and can't shoot. Gets it back to E.C. He's not really a scorer. E.C. is basically a defensive forward, so the pistol lets it fly, and he hits. No shot is too long for Maravich. Well, it's going to be an, an offensive show here. It's shaping up now. Pistol beating Bob McAdoo. Well, he'd have 60 if he kept on going the way he is right now. He's got 15, and we still have two and a half to go in the quarter. That's Tom McMillan. Tom McMillan gets another one. Tommy has his fourth field goal of the opening quarter. It's 23-21 New Orleans. And the Knicks are keeping the pressure on. Maravich behind the screen. Williams always shoots well against the Knicks, it seems. Here's the first shot of the game for E.C. Coleman, and he comes back from a two-game layoff to hit it. E.C. from Houston Baptist. You know, E.C. is a smart basketball player. He's not a great shooter, but he takes good shots. He works hard for his shots and plays great defense. Now we've got two minutes left in the opening quarter. McAdoo in the lane gets the shot away. It is banked up and in by Big Bob, and he's got 11. It's turning into an offensive show by both ball clubs right now. Nobody's missing. Earlier this year, we had a shootout between Maravich and Monroe in a game at the Garden. First time the Jazz was in. Oh, there's a foul on Beer. Pistol Pete really played, much like a fiddle that time. He was moving very well to get his shot off that time. And we've got a timeout at the Superdome with 1.43 left in the first quarter to score. The Jazz 25 and the Knicks 23. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Jazz make an adjustment and switch E.C. Coleman over to Bob McAdoo because right now Otto Moore is not containing Bob McAdoo at all. Pete Maravich headed for the foul line as we come back to play. Pistol was fouled by Butch Beard. We've got 1.43 left in the quarter. Would you believe his 16th point of this period? Well, that's really something. 17 of 27 for Pistol Pete. It's 27-23, New Orleans. And he's shooting them from all over the floor. Beard passing down to Jim McMillan. A well-run play to Monroe, but he is in the lane for three seconds. Pretty good defense by Aaron James in the lane. Aaron James kept Monroe out of shooting position. That's New York's sixth turnover. Earl is upset. He's very close to a technical foul. Maravich is getting a rest now, and you see Mo Howard, number 14 in the game for the first time. Mo was a draft choice of the Cavaliers this year out of Maryland. Picked up here recently as a free agent. And Mo Howard hits the basket. 29-23, New Orleans. Monroe at the baseline. Off the back iron, no good. E.C. Coleman for a board. 106 left in quarter number one. They're spelling Maravich here at the quarter mark so he can get a little extra rest. McElroy's drive was short, blocked by the Knicks, and boy, McElroy thought there was a foul, but none is called. And so did Pete Maravich and Elgin Bale here off the bench yelling at the official. So nobody's happy here tonight, except that New Orleans leads it by six points. Less than a minute remaining in the quarter. McElroy studies the move, pitches off to Howard. His second shot of the game is overshot. Tom McMillan gains possession for the Knicks. Here's Butch Beer. Butch on a drive down to the baseline. Looks back to Tommy Mack. He's open. No good. E.C. Coleman has a rebound. There have been very few offensive rebounds in the opening quarter by the Knicks. That's basically because both the big men, McMillan and McAdoo, are outside shooting jump shots, and there's nobody inside for that offensive rebound. Jazz working the ball. Mo Howard around the center, Otto Moore. McElroy gets it back to Otto. He had a jump shot earlier tonight. The crowd wants him to shoot. Here's one by Nate Williams, an air ball, and a foul. Paul Howard trying to get a layup. Second foul on the pearl. Well, the smallest man on the floor picking up that uh, ball for the New Orleans Jazz. Mo Howard and Monroe foul him as he went back up for his shot. Here's Howard, six for eight at the foul line this year. Howard was waived by Cleveland on the 10th of December and picked up last week by New Orleans. Here's the Jazz widest edge of the game, uh, an eight-point margin, 31 to 23. Ten seconds left in the quarter. It is good, and a foul on McElroy, and nothing like the old three-point play. Now Phil Jackson gets up off the bench to check in for the Knicks tonight. 
And no doubt you'll see New York going to a press now. Only seven seconds to go in this first quarter. The Knicks will probably go to that full court press after Ifero makes this free throw. You'll have two for one. Jackson replaced Tom McMillan. Earl, a good free throw shooter, and that's it. Now, let's see. There's Jackson pressuring the inbound by Coleman. He gets it into Nate Williams. Nate comes up front to Howard. Howard drives off, and a block by McAdoo. Another block! Find the best by Bob McAdoo. Well, he made two super plays that time. And that's the end of the first quarter with the score. New Orleans 36, and the, uh, check that. New Orleans 31, the next 26. Well, two super plays on defense by Bob McAdoo. The first play is going to be a block here. Otto Moore gets set to go up, and McAdoo really makes a fine play. No foul. Ball is picked up by Nate Williams. He goes up, and McAdoo, with two personal fouls in the first quarter, makes another fine defensive play. Two fine plays back-to-back -back by Bob McAdoo. Maravich is back in the game now, and Tiki Burton and Bill Bradley are playing for the Knicks, as is Lonnie Shelton. Lonnie blocked that one nicely. Another try, and Williams scores. Nate Williams... Well, the Jazz effective on their offensive board. They've been able to get that second shot, but New York so far has not been able to do that. Dickie Burton made a couple of long shots at Atlanta last night. Butch Beard passing cross court to Lonnie Shelton. Lonnie looking a little confused on offense these days. Lonnie is playing mostly as a defensive ball player. Two seconds on the timer. McAdoo's shot hit the rim. Rebounded by Williams. It's a three-on-two break. Home oh, score. Did not get it back well on defense that time. McAdoo had to force that shot up because the 24-second clock was going out. The Knicks were slow getting back on defense. Jazz up by nine for the first time, 35 to 26. Shelton matched against Otto Mori. Also stole the ball, but Lonnie travels. Lonnie's rhythm was interrupted by the near steal by Otto Moore. Otto reached in and knocked that ball out of Lonnie's hand. Seventh turnover for the Knicks, five for New Orleans. Nate Williams, he always seems to shoot well against the Knicks. And Nate loves to shoot the basketball. When he gets the shot, he'll put it up. Talk about loving to shoot. Air ball by Maravich. He was really off range that time. And they're ruling that Bradley touched that ball last, and they're giving it to New Orleans. Nate Williams calling the play at the baseline for the Jazz. It's odd, but the Jazz and the Knicks are both battling the Boston Celtics for what appears to be the final playoff spot in the East. The Celtics have a game at Seattle tonight. Butch Beard, no good, no foul. Rebound, Otto Moore. And Richard, that's the same thing that Pete Maravich did. He got the call. Why couldn't Butch get it? Because Pete Maravich is a star, Cal. <laughs> Here's Maravich twisting by Lonnie Shelton, and the shot no good. Rebound, Beer. Here comes Butch. Beat it off to Lonnie Shelton, and he lays it. Lonnie Shelton. Nice move by Lonnie. Well, he's cooled off a little bit now. Maravich, he's missed three shots in a row after he's really shooting well in that first quarter. It's 35-28. The pistol had that one pop out. A head fake and a foul. Lonnie Shelton draws his first personal of the night. The Knicks just not able to get that offense, the defensive rebound. The shot was missed by Maravich, and he came right in between McAdoo and Lonnie Shelton to get the offensive rebound, then he drew the foul. Walt Frazier is coming back to work for the Knicks. He'll replace Butch Beard. And Maravich to the foul line. That was his 18th point. Nobody in this ball game has missed a free throw yet. Both sides perfect at the foul line. Now it's 37-28 New Orleans. Bradley on a floor pass to McAdoo. Goes down to the baseline, shoots over top E.C. Coleman, but it's no good. And Maravich takes the rebound away from Lonnie Sheldon up to Coleman. Score it! And the Jazz jump up by 11, 39-28. Red Holes calls a timeout. With 9.35 left in the second quarter, the score, New Orleans 39, the Knicks 28. The Knicks for the backcourt now of Burden and Frazier, Bob McAdoo at center, Bradley and Shelton at forward. Here's Mo Howard guarding Tiki Burden. Tiki works inside, and the ball is slapped away, goes out over the sidelines, and Tiki has lost it. 
again, Red Olsman venting his emotions on referee Don Murphy, who says, sit down, Red. That time, up until now, Murphy hadn't said anything, but this time he pointed at Red and said, a seat. Maravich. Boy, he's got all kinds of moves. What move doesn't this guy have, Kel? Well, he can do it all. I don't know how you stop a guy like that. You have to have help, and uh, right now, the Knicks aren't able to do anything with him. 21 points for the pistol right now on a 41-28 lead. A whistle before the shot by Tiki Burton. Three seconds, that basket does not count. McAdoo wasn't in the lane that time. He couldn't pick the ball up. And when the ball was rolled loose and Tiki picked it up, McAdoo was still in the lane. McAdoo is taken out of the game, getting a rest now, and he has been replaced by Phil Jackson. Well, the turnovers are mounting, and the Knicks have committed nine to five for the Jazz. By the way, turnovers really hurt the Knicks last night. If you wanted to make a quickie analysis of last night's game, as William shoots the score, you'd point to the fact that the Knicks turned it over 23 times, leading to 22 Atlanta points. The Hawks turned it over 17 times, but only 10 Nick points. So a difference in points of 22-10. And here is a foul on E.C. Coleman. E.C. trailing Phil Jackson along the lane. He was not in good defensive position that time. That's why he picked that foul up. Next play it back in. Frazier makes the bounce pass to Tiki Burden. The ball was knocked away by Howard. Here comes Mo. Score it. And look at the happy Mo Howard. And an inbound steal for the Jazz. Everything is going wrong. Pistol fire. Everything is going right for the Knicks now. They're losing the ball on the offensive end, and they can't seem to contain the Jazz in the defensive end. Tricky Burton with the ball now. Mo Howard reaches in and knocks the ball away, and he beats Frazier up the floor for the layup. And then the inbounds pass was stolen, and Pistol Pete made another one. Here's Mo Howard firing no good. We had a foul on Lonnie Shelton at the other end, and the Knicks have lost the ball again. Well, turnovers to five for New Orleans, and they picked them up in a hurry here. Williams speeding off the drive. Here's Maravich. They got it to the guy they want. Pistol in and out of the lane. Here's his good. A 21-point lead, 49 to 28. Shelton gets a basket, and that's only the second basket for the Knicks in the quarter as you watch Dean Meminger get ready to come into the game. Oh, the Knicks are having two big problems right now. One is turnovers on the offense, and the second is not able to contain the Jazz at all when they're on defense. Well, that basket counted, and Walt Frazier draws the foul. Lonnie Shelton has scored all points for the Knicks in the quarter as you watch Dean Meminger come to work. By the way, Dean did something very unusual in last night's game. He picked up three assists in two minutes. <laughs> now, that's pretty good. Well, Dean's role really is to play defense and try to get the ball to the shooter. He's not a particularly good outside shooter, but he's a smart ball player, a good defensive ball player, and he looks for the open man. Otto Moore is not a good free throw shooter, 67%. Rebound, Phil Jackson, nearly stolen by Howard. 51 to 30. Next, we'll get it back, but Howard's playing some defense. Well, he certainly is hustling back, coming in behind Earl Monroe and knocking the ball away. New Orleans has outscored the next 20 to 4 in the quarter. A loose ball foul is called on Maravich. These fans are getting excited. That's the first break the Knicks have had in some time. Pistol called on his third personal foul. That could be a factor. It's pretty early to have three. 7.03 left in the second quarter. Bill Jackson at the baseline. Off the back iron. will play it from the sideline. The ball will be triggered by Monroe. Into McAdoo. Pearl gets it back to Jackson. A jumper by Phil. No good. Rebound. Williams fire it out to Maravich. He threw it too long and Monroe gets back and intercepts it. First turnover of the quarter against the Jazz. The Knicks have turned it over six times in the period. And New Orleans picks it right off again. The Knicks just not moving that ball well on the offensive end. 
The Jets playing real good defense, but of course the Knicks are not sure off on offense at all. Well, last night, the Knicks had their lowest quarter of the year, a dozen points. Right now in this quarter, halfway through it, they've scored just four. 6.20 left in the quarter. Looks like somebody ought to put a handle on that ball right now. McAdoo shoots. Good. And inside, contact between Phil Jackson and uh, Otto Moore, and they both went down to the floor. 13 points for McAdoo. Now the Knicks have given Dean Memmage the task of trying to contain Pete Maravich. Nobody else has been able to do anything with him so far. Well, what do you say? 27 points for Maravich, and we're five minutes, almost six minutes from halftime. He's an incredible performer. Earl twists into the lane, but he traveled. It doesn't count. Well, Pistol can shoot, but he wants to get his shot. So if you watch him using a screen here, working against Dean Memetier, now he comes off the screen by Nate Williams and Otto Moore. Two guys boxing out right there, and there Pistol goes up for a shot. Number 53, Rich Kelly, has come into play center. There's the pass into Kelly. He is a second-year man from Stanford. Kelly was ejected in New York on Tuesday night. That basket does not count. Offensive foul is the call. was ejected for arguing Tuesday night. Elgin Baylor showing a little displeasure, but he's got to be careful here because this club leads it by 21. He can't be too unhappy. Another steal. Oh, the turnovers are killing the Knicks. Kelly. And a 23-point lead. 55 to 32. Time out for the New York Knicks. Time out for the New York Knicks. With 5.04 left in the second quarter, the score, the Jazz 55 and the Knicks 32. Oh, Griffin. Griffin is called on a foul. Earl trying to work against Maverick that time to draw the foul on him, but Griffin came up and helped out and he committed the foul. And Knicks now going with two small forwards in an effort to get some uh, better offensive play in the ballgame. Knicks made some points. They've scored just six in the quarter. Bill Bradley with the ball passing across to Monroe. Pearl on a drive. Maravich has him blocked off to Jim McMillan for a jumper. It's no good and a rebound Griffin. Here's a halftime NBA score. Golden State 52 and Buffalo 50. The Warriors have lost three in a row and the Braves have won four straight. Joe Mullaney doing a fine job in Buffalo. Maravich with a Incredible, absolutely incredible, 29 points. Well, he is doing it all now, showing his hook shot on Dean Memmers. 57 to 32. Bill Bradley fires one up that will not go in. Okay, the Knicks are not getting anything inside offensively. Everything is coming from the outside, and they're not hitting very well, and they're not getting those offensive rebounds. Knicks have been outscored in the quarter 26 to 6. Williams on a drive. It is up and good. A 28 to 6 margin for the Jazz here in the quarter, and they lead it 59 to 32. No good. Rebound Coleman. No second tries for the Knicks right now. We've got three and a half minutes left in this quarter, and it's been a nightmare. Last night it was the third quarter. It was so bad. Oh, Howard puts one in. Nobody is missing at that end of the floor. 61 to 32, they have almost doubled the Knicks' output. This is an incredible offensive show of the New Orleans Jazz. They can do no wrong. You saw Butch Beard getting ready to come in. And an offensive foul. And, and I tell you, this is really unusual to see just everything go wrong. Here is Butch Beard coming in. Well, you see Coleman doing a good job defensively against Bob McAdoo. McAdoo was trying to get free for a shot, and he pushed E.C. away. This is not the largest deficit the Knicks have faced this year. Back on January 11th in the third quarter at Portland, they were down by 34. But it's approaching that as Maravich guns one up, and it's 63 to 32. A steal! And it's taken by Meminger. That time the Jazz just rushed it up a little bit too much. Beard at the baseline, goes on the end line, he turned it over. Right now, Pete Maravich has one less point than the Knicks as a team. <laughs> now that's something. And Red Holzman has got to be a frustrated human being, and I don't blame him. What 
sense as a coach do at a time like this about the only thing you can do is shuffle your players. Here's a jump ball. And hope you come up with a combination that they can play more effectively. Right now, the Knicks cannot do anything right on either end of the floor. Meminger against Howard. A battle of the Little Giants. And the Jazz keep it. No, it's stolen away by Beard. Up front to Jimmy McMillan. He drives. Off the glass. No good. Coleman rebounds. That was fine defense by Maravich. Williams on a move. And he traveled. Yes, he did. 2.17 left in the quarter. And the Knicks are calling a timeout. Well, what do you think, uh, Cal? New Orleans had 31 points at the end of the opening quarter. Now they've got 63. The Knicks have 26, and now they've got 32. Well, what do I think? The Jazz are playing a great basketball game, no doubt about it. They're doing everything right, and the Knicks are doing everything wrong right now. Uh, the Jazz are uh, getting good shots inside. They're getting the second shot. They're running the ball because the Knicks are not shooting well. The Jazz are controlling their defensive boards, coming out very quickly. Since E.C. Coleman is coming to the ball game against Bob McAdoo, he's pretty well contained. McAdoo, he was hot in the first quarter for New York, and no one can seem to hit from the outside of the Knicks right now. Most of their shots are all coming from the outside, and again, there's not that second chance because the Jets are controlling their defensive board. The lowest quarter by any team in the NBA this year is 10, that is by six different teams. The fewest points in a half is 28 by the Nets at Washington on January 21st. The Knicks have already uh, surpassed that, but uh, the quarter mark is still up for grabs because because the Knicks have scored just six here in the quarter. And uh, they have been outscored in the period 32 to six. It is really one of the most unusual periods of NBA pro basketball that I've ever seen. And Red is really laying into the club and I can't blame him. And maybe a little tongue lashing here is exactly what's called for. Don Murphy has taken Red's heat as well. <laughs> maybe more so than the players. Murph working the game with Dick Bavetta tonight. We've got 2.17 left in the quarter, and of course the Knicks could easily get 15 points, but yet in the last two minutes, you can get them in a hurry. So let's see what happens. Here's Bill Bradley with a jump shot. It is no good, and a rebound by Coleman. I don't think the Knicks have had an offensive rebound in the quarter. Maybe one. Two minutes. Two minutes, two minutes left in the quarter as Howard shoots and scores. That makes it a 34 to 6 advantage in the quarter. It is 65 to 32 as the Jazz has doubled the Knicks output in the game. McAdoo is short. Offensive rebound. There's one for Big Mac. Out to Jim McMillan. Down to the baseline and a layup for Bradley. The eighth point of the quarter for the Knicks. Bradley scoring for the first time in the game. Minute and a half left in the third quarter. New Orleans on top, 65 to 34. The rookie Paul Griffin looking for help. Five seconds on the timer. He'll do it himself. It is no good, and Bradley has the rebound. Here comes Tiki Bird. Tiki goes inside, puts it up. Good, and we've got a foul some other NBA scorers at the half. Detroit 49 to 42 over the Nets. At the end of a quarter, Denver leads Kansas City 36-31. At the end of a quarter, Chicago over Atlanta 26 to 16. Bill Jackson in for the Knicks. Tiki Burden hits the first free throw. Tiki hitting at 56% in his only free throw, I should say, and Jackson gets that ball. Court press worked for New York that time. They made this deal, and McAdoo had to jump at the top of the key. Knicks now with 11 points in the quarter. They'll make it to 12 points in the quarter. Tiki Burton comes back and scores again. And the Knicks putting a little dent in that margin right now. It is 65 to 41. 36 seconds remaining in the second quarter, but no matter how it finishes, it's going to be with one for the Knicks. Maravich was on the baseline. That drive fell apart. That's one of the few things that Pistol has done wrong this evening, going baseline and stepped on the out-of-bounds line. 
Maravich has scored 31 points in the game thus far. His career high, by the way, is 51. And if he would keep playing like this in the second half, of course, he would have a shot at that. Nicky Burton left up a high riser. No good. Bill Jackson offensive rebound. McAdoo, and we've got a whistle from Dick Pavetta. That was a good call. Nate Williams pushing McAdoo away as McAdoo was trying to control the ball. This kind of game has to be tough for the officials to work, too, because the Knicks are out there playing in frustration. It's a freewheeling ball game. The Jazz are pretty much having their own way, bringing the ball up the floor almost every time they get the opportunity, and they've been very effective, particularly the Pistons. 17 points for McAdoo, 65 to 43. Jazz breaks the pressure this time. Howard feeding off to Williams. He blows a layup. McAdoo rebounds. Seven seconds in the quarter. Five seconds. Tiki Burton to the basket. No good. And the rebound by Howard. And that will do it in the quarter. Pistol Pete, what a first half he had. He shot 12 of 18. He also shot 7 for 7 in fouls, and he had 5 assists, which is the best figure for any player on either team as well. So, in addition to scoring 31 points, you might say that he was accountable for 41 yeah, he had a, a, the Jazz points. A tremendous first half. He played a real fine all-around basketball game, and this was not able to contain him at all. He pretty much did what he wanted to do out there, shooting a long jump shot. Nix did try to help out on defense, but he's so quick he was able to get his shots off, and again, Again, a fine, outstanding offensive performance by Pistol Pete Myrovich. Bob McAdoo shooting 7 of 14 for the Knicks. He leads them in scoring with 17 points. And then we drop down to 8 for Tom McMillan. Tom shooting 4 out of 7. The rebounding leader for the Knicks is Bob McAdoo with 5. 2 on the offensive board, 3 on the defensive board. Team-wise, the Knicks were beaten on the boards rather decisively, 29-20 in the first half. Uh, the turnovers, which had really hurt the Knicks for a while, actually sort of evened up with that Nick comeback at the end of the second quarter. And here at the half, the Knicks have turned it over 15 times and the Jazz a dozen times. At one stage in that quarter, New Orleans had outscored the Knicks by a 34 to 6 margin. In the quarter overall, it was 34 to 17 as the Knicks came back with a rush at the end. Elgin Baylor, one of the all-time great forwards in the NBA. In fact, maybe the all-time greatest forward. Coaching of the New Orleans Jazz now. And the Knicks going back with the same team that finished up the second quarter. Jim McMillan, Butch Beard, Chucky Burton, Bill Jackson, and Bob McAdoo. And here is the hugeness of this Superdome. And this basketball court almost seems like it's lost in it. They just kind of side it up to one side, put in those extra stands, and away we go. Oh, but this is a huge head of us here in New Orleans. This is not your average arena. And there's a warning for Phil Jackson for delay of game as he reached over and knocked the ball away from Jim McElroy. Delay of game warning. Well, you're allowed to play tight defense, but you're not supposed to touch the ball while it's in the opponent's hands. Here are the Knicks using a press, and apparently they're going to go with it and see if it can bring them back. 65-43 as we start the third quarter. New Orleans on top. Here's the pistol, and he has been hot. Miguel Roy, stalwart, a little bit long, and McAdoo gets the rebound. And let's see if the Knicks can score first here in the third quarter. Tiki Burden to McAdoo. Mac Bates, a pop shot, moves in tighter. It is good, and a foul on Otto Moore. Oh, McAdoo making a good move. He had a jump shot, but he put the move that time on the big fellow, Otto Moore. Got him up in the air, and Mac leaned in a little bit. You watch here now. Mac pulls up, gets the fake. Now he leans in a little bit, gets the contact. Then he goes up and gets a good roll, and he makes a three-point play out of it. Right, he adds the free throw, and so it's 65-46. Maravich <laughs> bailed it back as he came across midcourt in the air. Here's the shot by Pistol. He's good. Pete Maravich now with 33 points in the ball game. 67-46 New Orleans. This is the final meeting of the year between these two teams. If the Knicks lose the game, they will lose the series, and it'll be their first series loss of the year. The Knicks have completed five series so far, and they have either won them or broken even. Here is a basket by Stallworth. 69-46. to 
Tiki Burden feeds off the drive to Beard. Back off to Tiki. Baseline jump shot is short. And a whistle and a loose ball foul. That's going to be on Griffin as he was uh, he ran into Jim McMillan going up with the rebound. The Knicks have won their season series from Golden State and Los Angeles by three to one margins, and they finish two two against Cleveland, Houston, and the Nets. McAdoo's shot is good. Second basket of the quarter by Bob. He's got 22 points. 69-48 New Orleans. Maravich almost tripped. Beats to Griffin. Maravich said something to Tiki Burton. Tiki is picked off here. And this goal hits. I don't know how you stop him. <laughs> he is too much. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm running out of things to say about Maravich. McAdoo. Oh, McAdoo. Okay. McAdoo. McAdoo's not doing a bad job, but New York is shooting that ball very well, too. He has outscored the pistol in the quarter, 7-4. to four. Butch Beard on a foul. i tell you why Butch is upset. He got nothing but ball, but he knocked the ball into Maravich's head. <laughs> it was a good defensive play by Butch. He came over the top and hit the ball. The ball bounced off a pistol's head, and they call a foul on Butch. That's the old head foul, Cal. <laughs> Brent Holzman really frustrated. The pistol with a 37-point output. He is really something. He set his uh, career high as Beard puts one up short. Maravich set his career high earlier this year. It's a 51-point mark. The Galroy blocked off the board, and here come the Knicks. A three-on-two New York break. Punched away by Griffith. Oh, this is running a good fast break that time. Uh, Bush being trying to drop that ball off to Jim McMillan, who was running right beside him, and he had a better chance, I think, to try to get that ball to Tiki Burton. Jim McMillan inbounds to Tiki Burton. Tiki almost out of room at the sideline. Here's a jumper by Tiki, just a little bit long, and a rebound by Griffin. He throws it away. Beard to the middle. McAdoo. Good. And McAdoo has scored 26 points, nine in the quarter. He's been very hot here in this third quarter. The only man really shooting well for the Knicks. 73-52. New Orleans on top. McElroy <laughs> goes on a drive and gets himself a basket. McElroy makes it 75-52. New Orleans. The Knicks once trail in this game by 33. Their second biggest deficit of the year. McAdoo misses. Jackson picks up the loose ball to save it for the Knicks. Jim McMillan goes on a drive on Stallworth, stops and shoots and scores. Jim McMillan with his first score of the night. Well, the story of this ball game is Pistol Pete Maravich. He is really doing it all. The Knicks trying to really give Bush Beard some help now defensively against Pistol, but nothing seems to work. 39 points for Maravich, and that matches his high against the Knicks. That matches the high for any single player in the NBA against New York this year. Beard misses, offensive rebound, Jackson. Back to Butch. McAdoo and a whistle, three seconds on the Knicks. Now, Frazier, Meminger, and Shelton, a 3-0 of 3 coming in for the Knicks. Hey, that's redundant, a 3-0 of 3. What else would it be? <laughs> well, the Knicks the time had two or three good opportunities for shots, and they uh, passed a little bit too much until one man was caught in the three-second area, and that rest did not count. Holzman is keeping McAdoo and Jackson in the game. Otherwise, the three changes. Here's the pistol. The next point for him will be a high for the year against the Knicks. No good for Stallworth. Rebound Shelton stolen by Stallworth and a whistle. So Knicks finally got a break. That was a foul as uh, Lonnie had the rebound. The ball was knocked away, but Stallworth got him on the arm while he had the ball. It'll be a backcourt foul and Lonnie will shoot too. Lonnie Shelton has scored two field goals in the game. At the line, Lonnie is a 73 percenter. Last night, the Knicks did not shoot good free throws as a team. They were 67%. Tonight in the ball game, they have not missed. They are 9 for 9 as a team. Well, Lonnie knocks two off the lead, and it's 77-56 New Orleans. And here's pressure again for the Knicks with 8.20 left in the third quarter. Knicks back home to play the Indiana Pacers tomorrow night. Pistol almost tripped again. Here's his jumper. No good this time. McAdoo rebound. He beat the press all by himself that time. Didn't he? Didn't need the other four guys. Here's a McAdoo shot. A little bit off target. Lonnie Shelton has the offensive rebound. 
Knicks have had a number of offensive rebounds this quarter. In and out for McAdoo. Lonnie Shelton, a turnaround. Good. Well, one thing to the Knicks credit, they're trailing here by 20, 19 points, but they are still playing hard basketball. They're not giving up. Tom McMillan will be back in the game shortly for the Knicks. James McElroy matched up against Dean Meminger. Here's Maravich with Frazier. Everybody's had a chance at Pete tonight. He's working for this one. He takes it. No good. The Knicks were streaming three seconds. Lonnie Shelton drops the ball. Good pass by Dean Memmage. I didn't see that ball coming in, and he lost it going out of bounds. Lineup change, number 52, Tom McMillan comes in, and he replaces Phil Jackson. I tell you, if there's such a thing as a ball average, this will have to cool off pretty soon because he has not missed too many shots this season. I think he defies that law and a few others sometimes. <laughs> Otto Moore gets fed in the post, back to the pistol, goes on a drive right to the basket. It is good, and he's fouled. And he has hit for the highest number of points of any player against the Knicks this year. He's got 41. And he made another great offensive move. That time going to his left, going around Tom McMillan, and Tom pushing him as he goes up for a shot. at the foul line adds the point now it is 80 to 58 New Orleans and the pistol with 42 he is 10 for 10 at the foul line he is now nine points away from his career high E.C. Coleman gets called on the foul for New Orleans and New Orleans is taking this time out with 654 left in the third quarter the score the Jazz 80 the next 58 6.53 left in the third quarter. Leminger, Frazier on the Knicks back line. Here's McAdoo up front with Tom McMillan, Lonnie Shelton. And the Knicks have lost the ball. The Knicks trying to get that ball inside to Bob McAdoo as he was being fronted by E.C. Coleman. And the ball was thrown out of bounds. That was the Knicks' 21st turnover, 14 for New Orleans. Halfway through quarter number three. Knicks have been busy lately. Tonight is the Knicks' seventh of eight games in 11 days. Don Murphy sounds a whistle underneath, and he's got a foul on Lonnie Shelton. Here you saw Pistol Pete Maravich versatility. He was double that time, and he got a good pass inside to Otto Moore. Lonnie Shelton helping out, came over and knocked the shot away, but he fouled Otto in this shot attempt. Big Otto, 67 percenter at the foul line. a veteran of Pan America. First round draft choice of the Detroit Pistons in 68. 82-58. A bulge for New Orleans. Leminger to Shelton. Bonnie at the baseline. Backs off. Does not shoot. And a whistle. Three second call on Lonnie. His heel was in the lane. Lonnie indecisive that time. He had the ball inside. Good defense by the Jazz, and he was in the lane. All right, here's Maravich. What a ball game he's playing. 42 points for the pistol right now. Frazier knocks the ball free. Clive trying to dog pistol feet. Off it comes to McElroy. A jump shot for him. No good. McAdoo rebounding. Now we've reached the halfway point of the quarter, and it's 82-58 New Orleans. The Pearl throws up an off-balance shot. No good. Shelton fighting for the rebound. It comes to Stallworth. And he decides not to force the fast break and to go ahead and wait. Maravich still working for shots. And he gets the shot. Oh, what an incredible shot. A foul will be called on McAdoo, and he almost got the field goal. Yeah, he can do no wrong tonight. Earl was on him. He made, put a good move on Monroe to get him off balance. McAdoo came over to help out. You'll watch on the replay now. He puts the fake on Earl. Earl goes past. McAdoo comes to help out. He gets them both up in the air. And he gets the contact there as he goes up for a shot. Pistol has missed his first free throw. He is now 11 of 12 at the line. And you'd have to say, unless he sits down for a large stretch of this ball game, if he keeps playing, he's going to set a new career high tonight. Because he's within eight points of it right now. Ten seconds on the timer. Lonnie Shelton shoots. No good. Rebound E.C. Coleman. It's 83-58 New Orleans with five and a half left in the third quarter. Pistol fires. He's short. He's running out of energy, I think. He might be a little tired now. Wouldn't be surprised. Frazier lets one loose. Good by Clyde. 
Frazier with four points. That's his first field goal of the ball game. It is 83-60, the Jazz. The Knicks have knocked 10 points off what was the highest New Orleans lead. Here's Pistol from the baseline. This one is no good. He's missed about three straight shots now. Here's Frazier. No good. Rebound Otto Moore. 4.45 remaining in the quarter. And the Knicks will be facing a stretch of three straight games at home, which they will enjoy. Maravich misses again. And a loose ball foul on Maravich. The pistol draws his fourth personal foul. Well, the pistol here is the pistol. Apparently, he's kind of cooled off now. He's missed several shots from the outside. But he's had a fantastic offensive night so far. New Orleans in the penalty with 4.37 left in the quarter. And Nate Williams, number 22, has come in for the Jazz. And Phil Jackson is going to come in for the Knicks, but he's coming in for Shelton, so he will wait. Or is he? He's going to wait until the first free throw is attempted at any rate. And now he's coming into the game for Tom McMillan. Jackson 4.37 left in the third quarter. Been a tough night for the Knicks. And no Joshua will see New York going to a full court press with Phil Jackson in the ball game. They were pretty successful in the first first half with this. Ten points for Shelton. Here is Maravich dribbling through that press. He's going to go in and drive shoot on the run. It's good, and he was fouled. And Pistol ran right over top. A cameraman perched at courtside. Boy, he I, he looks like he wants that new career high tonight. Well, it's awfully tough to press a man with his dribbling ability. You'll watch him here beating Lonnie Shelton. Monroe coming over, and he just goes right around Earl here. Earl bumps him as he goes up for a shot. He makes a three-point play out of it. That's right. He hits the foul. That's his 46th point. Four and a half left in the quarter. 86-62, to 62, New Orleans on top. We're in the third quarter at the Superdome in New Orleans. Frazier double team as the Jazz put a pressure on. Lonnie Shelton in the lane, gets it back out. McAdoo drives and scores. Big Bob with a big scoring night. He's got 28. Well, he's been New York's offense this evening. He's been the only one that's been effective on offense. But the Knicks trail it by 22, and they trailed it by 22 when the quarter started, so they haven't made any progress within the period with four minutes to go. Nate Williams drives, no good. Shelton tips it into the air and takes it down. Up front, he comes to Frazier. A breakaway and five scores. That knocks it back to 20, 86 to 66. E.C. Coleman swings it around to Williams. He takes a pop shot. In and out, no good. McAdoo into the lane. Bounced that ball real high off the glass. And a, an assist by McAdoo as he bounced it off the glass. I think McAdoo traveled that time. He got away with the traveling violation. But the Knicks can use all the breaks they can get right here. Timeout New Orleans with 3.25 left in the third quarter. The score, Jazz 86, Knicks 68. Time back in with 3.20 left in the third quarter. McElroy feeds it to Otto Moore, gets it back. Here's a McElroy jump shot that's across no good. Phil Jackson with a rebound. Earl Monroe moves it forward for the Knicks. He's playing with Butch Beard on the back line. Monroe's shot is short, and McAdoo lets it slip by, and New Orleans will have possession. You might see Earl try to get more aggressive offensively to see if he can get that fifth personal foul on Pete Maravich. Pete Maravich set his career high of 51 points on December 14th. That was the night that Elgin Baylor took over as coach of this ball club, and the Jazz beat Kansas City. Maravich misses. Rebound McAdoo, pitching it behind. He was trapped, and Jackson, fortunate thing, he was there. Lonnie Shelton fires. Good for Lonnie. He has a dozen points. You know, Nick could be in pretty good shape. Now, if Elton will have to rest Pete Maravich, because he's been carrying their offense, and they're down 16 now, but they're playing tough defense at this point. Time left in the ball game, 2.27 third quarter, and Nate Williams hits a field goal. 11,033 fans watching the game at the Superdome tonight. Monroe, no good. Rebound the pistol. But they're going to have to score a little better than that. Take advantage of these opportunities on the missed shots. Maravich still working for shots. Here goes the pistol. Double team. Score it. Maravich now with 48 points. Can you imagine when you talk about all the things we've said about this guy tonight? player in the NBA who averaged, averaged
average 50 points a ball game. And that was a big fella, Wilt Chamberlain. I mean, he didn't do it once in a while. He went through a year averaging 50 points a ball game. That's a record that I don't think will ever be broken. I doubt it. A minute and a half left in the third quarter. Lonnie pokes the ball away from E.C. Coleman. And the 14. Bo Howard coming back for New Orleans, number 14. Number 24, Bill Bradley inserted into the Nick lineup, replacing Bob McAdoo. Pistol Pete Maravich getting a rest right now, and listen to the hand he gets from this New Orleans crowd. Fifth down with 48 points. New Orleans turns it over. And Butch Beard lays it up on a pass from Monroe. And I tell you, Pistol has to be in great position to renegotiate his contract now after a game like this. You watch uh, Maravich here making a move against Bush Beard. Comes between his legs. Then he gets a little screen there. Comes around. McAdoo comes to help. Earl comes to help. But to no avail. Now we've had a foul call on Phil Jackson. And it almost developed into a fight. Jackson and Otto Moore. And you know when Phil sometimes commits fouls, he gets, uh, he gets rather uh, definite about it. Red is upset. He claims that Otto Moore pushed Phil Jackson first. Well, let's see what the decision is on this because Red was really irate with that call. The two officials are comparing, the two coaches, everybody's there. Now, Elton. Oh, Otto Moore has been assessed with a punching foul in addition to the personal foul assessed to Phil Jackson. So that means Phil Jackson will shoot one shot, Otto will shoot one and one for two. Otto, he'll get his first, his uh, chance first. Okay, Otto makes his two. Now, if we go to the other end, let's see what Jackson does. 104 remaining in the third quarter. The Jazz by 20 doesn't like this. Jackson on the personal foul, but a punching foul assessed to Otto Moore. Kind of strange. Uh, Otto gets to shoot two and Phil gets to shoot one. Well, the Jazz in the penalty situation and the, and the punching foul only calls for one shot. And the Knicks are in the penalty, right? Monroe in trouble at the baseline. Beard knocked away. We've got a foul. Well, Butch Beard came in for the offensive rebound. Earl's shot came up short, and Butch's arm was held as he went back up. Mo Howard called on that foul. 57 seconds left in the quarter. And Butch Beard goes to the free throw line. Actually, both teams are in the penalty. And they have been since uh, about the four and a half minute mark of the quarter. That is to say, four and a half minutes to go. have not missed a free throw tonight. They are 13 for 13 at the foul line. And there's a full court press by the Knicks again. Oh, and Beard tipped that ball. He almost had his grasp on it. He touched it and it went out, but he almost caught it. Here's Nate Williams. Shovel pass to McElroy. Jackson stays with McElroy. And a backcourt foul on Phil. Knicks desperate now defensively. They're putting pressure all over in the backcourt. And Phil called for the foul against McElroy. He'll shoot three for two. Here's a technical foul on Red Holston. Red has been called on a technical. Murphy had just had enough of Red Holston. I don't think there's anything particular Red said right here. It's just that Red's been up for about the last five minutes. Galroy will shoot the technical. Both teams have been hot from the free throw line. New Orleans 14 out of 16 tonight. Well, Red was complaining on that last time the Knicks were pressing the ball in the backcourt. The pass came inbounds, was deflected. The 24-second clock was never reset. 
And that's a valid reason. The Knicks are trying to press that ball on the backboard. and an unhappy coach. Well, the Jazz are cooperating a little bit by missing some free throws here. Miguel Roy's missed two straight. And he'll get one more because he went from the backboard when that foul was committed. First he shot the technical, then he had three to make two. So it's 94-75. New Orleans on top. 48 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Lonnie Shelton floating it down to Jackson. And Monroe is fouled as he moves into the lane. Mo Howard called in the foul. Second foul on Howard. Both clubs are in the penalty. So free throws coming for Earl Monroe. A low scoring game for the Pearl. Just seven points tonight. One for one at the foul line. Four seventy-seven again. The press put on by the Knicks. They need a tip by Jackson, and the Knicks steal it. Here's a jumper for the Pearl. No good. Bradley tips it back to the Pearl again. Monroe to Bill at the baseline. Back to Monroe. A jump shot. No good, and a rebound out of more. The Knicks really wanted that basket because the pressure defense got them the chance. That's true. They worked hard on defense to get that ball back, and Earl had a couple shots, but it just wouldn't fall for him. Twelve seconds remaining in the third quarter from the Superdome in New Orleans. Here's Mo Howard into the lane to Otto Moore. His shot. A buzzer beater by Otto Moore. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score, the Jazz 96 and the Knicks 77. The Knicks will start this quarter with Monroe and Beard playing backcourt. McAdoo at center, Shelton and Bradley at forward. Here's Beard moving it into the forecourt. Pete Maravich is back into the game for New Orleans, and he has scored 48. Beard shot is no good. Bradley offensive rebound. The follow shot is overshot. And an over-the-top foul on Lonnie Shelton. Well, Lonnie hustling on the offensive board, trying to get that ball back for New York. As Bill Bradley's shot was deflected as he went up, and Lonnie picked up his fourth personal foul. Maravich with a whole quarter to work on his career high is only three points away from it. Here's Mo Howard to Nate Williams. He shoots on Bradley. It is short. Rebound Bob McAdoo. Max had a bunch of rebounds tonight. And they did a good job of pushing off on that play. A drive by Beard. Black! Nate Williams had his left arm up against the defender and pushed him away when he got that shot off. Butch will trigger it at the baseline, guarded by the pistol. Comes to Shelton. He gets a straightaway jumper that is no good. Griffin boards it. Just underway in the final quarter. It's 96-77. Traveling for Howard. Lonnie Shelton. Line driver is short. Beard uses it as an assist and puts it up and in. And Beard did a pretty good job of getting Pistol Pete out of the way on that play when he got the offensive rebound. 96-79. 11 minutes left in the ball game, and here's a whistle. Bill Bradley called on a foul. Tom McMillan checking in for the Knicks. And he replaces Lonnie Shelton. Here's a matchup, a good matchup to watch. Bradley and Nate Williams. Maravich rims one. So he's stuck at 48. The Pearl. The fans here thought he took an extra step, but that's just his shoulder fake. <laughs> Earl got up there in a hurry when he got that pass from McAdoo. Earl has moves within moves. You got to watch for that. It's 96 to 81. Knicks have cut the uh, margin in half. The Jazz once led it by uh, 33. Well, there's Maravich hitting his 50th point. One away from a career high. His career high coming into the year was 50, but he had that 51 point game in December. Loose ball foul. Bob McAdoo called. Uh, both New York, New York's big men are in foul trouble now. McAdoo has four personal fouls, and Lonnie Shelton has four, as well as Pistol Pete Maravich. Here's Maravich walking it across the timeline, guarded by Beard. To Nate Williams, high post. To Otto Moore. He looked like he wanted to shoot. A 
Toronto doesn't very often shoot from that distance. Here's Griffin. Down to the baseline they go. A shot by Williams is in and out. Pacadu boards it for New York. Ten minutes remaining in the ball game as Beer moves it up and waits for help. Over the shoulder by Butch, and we've got a foul. Butch doing a good job of moving without the ball that time. They got a good pass from Bradley going down the lane. Butch will shoot two. Otto Moore called on the foul. By the way, our next telecast will not be for quite a while. We will not be on again until Wednesday, March 16th from Phoenix at 9.30. That's a long time off. It is. Knicks will be playing at home between now and then, with the exception of a Sunday afternoon game at Philadelphia, which uh, we are not permitted to cover. Ninety-eight to eighty-three. Knicks are seventeen for seventeen at the free throw line tonight. There's an offensive foul. It doesn't count. Howard upset because he lost the field goal. Well, I couldn't see that play from this position. I was kind of blocked out that time, but Mo Howard was really upset with the call. He was jumping up and down, as was his coach, Elgin Baylor. That's funny. Elgin Baylor saw it. <laughs> he had a worse angle than you did. Yeah, well, he couldn't see it then. <laughs> you got to stick up for your players. 98 to 83. Elgin actually is a kind of a mild-mannered coach, though. He doesn't uh, get too emotional out there. Eight seconds on the timer. Beer and beats it across to Tom McCon, drops the ball, and the Jazz picks it up, and that resets the timer. The Knicks the, with their 23rd turnover, Cal. They had a good opportunity now. They had to slice that lead down to 15. They could have cut to 13 on that play, but Bush didn't take that, get that shot up in the air. A jumper by the pistol, a career high for Maravich. 52 points, Maravich with a new career mark. And he does it with nine minutes left in the ball game. It's 100 to 83, New Orleans on top. And you folks watching on television tonight are seeing the best offensive game in Maravich's history. He's played professional ball for seven years. Ten points for Tom McPhillip. Again, it's only a 15-point margin, 100 to 85. Well, Nick has tried everything and everybody on the pistol, and nobody's worked out too well. He's still shooting. on the score sheet here in a minute. Monroe, short, air ball, and out of bounds. In the third quarter, the Knicks shot 41%, and the Jazz shot 44%. Here's Walt Frazier coming back, so is Sticky Burton. Monroe and Beard are coming out. Mo Howard and Maravich remain on the New Orleans back line. High post to Otto Moore. He's played a surprisingly good game, and he's played a lot more time tonight than Kelly. That's an offensive foul. Oh, uh, Nate made a move to get around Bill Bradley, but as he did and get, got his shot off, he crashed into Tom McMillan. Nate Williams is called on the personal foul as second. Eight minutes remaining. New Orleans by 17 points. Next need a streak. A long streak. Yeah. Tom McMillan. Well, he gets it started. It's back to 15. Tommy Mack with 12 points tonight. 102-87. The pistol firing for 56. He's got it. 56 points. Well, he's incredible. He had a cold streak for a while. We missed about three or four shots. Now he can't miss anything. Seven and a half minutes remaining. McAdoo drives on Griffin. Puts it up with a lot of spin, but it won't go, and Griffin has a rebound. Here's the guy that had 25 rebounds against Milwaukee on this floor Wednesday night. The fans cheering for Pete. Here goes the pistol. He'll let it fly. This one is off target, but he's been fouled. Frazier fouled him. Oh, he missed the shot, but he gets fouled in the attempt. He can do no wrong for the Jazz this evening. So he can pick up a couple here. That would give him 58. He makes them both. So the pistol at 58 and the Jazz on top, 106-87. Seven minutes left in this ball game. Knicks back home against the Pacers tomorrow night. Here's traveling. 
are taking a timeout, and this crowd will roar. With 6.59 left in the fourth quarter to score, New Orleans 106 on the Knicks 87. And uh, obviously he could uh, be deserving of some rest right now, but I believe he wants to stay in. Oh, yeah, he's playing like he wants to stay in. But the 80's got. Here they go, and he gets the layup to hit 60. You're watching basketball history for Pete Maravich tonight, 60 big ones. And this is the highest single game for any player in the NBA this year. Tom McMillan short, and the rebound taken down by Otto Moore. Pistol is great with the basketball, but he's also very good with the ball. You watch him get the ball up here, bump Dean off on that pick there. McMillan did nice switch, and that's the result. Pistol's in for a layup. Here's another jump shot by Maravich. No good. Rebound Otto Moore. Get it back to Mo Howard. He is. Previous high game by any NBA player this year was 51. It happened twice, both by Maravich and also by Phil Smith of uh, Golden State. Halfway through this final quarter, and Maravich is tripped, and he comes up holding his ankle. And wouldn't it be something if this fine player got hurt in a game where he had come up with a performance like this, but he got tangled up, and it looked like it was with Meminger, didn't it? Nope, I think it was uh, Tricky Burton came behind and reached in for the ball. Yeah, it's Tricky reaching yeah. in for the ball. He gets his foot, he twists his ankle a little bit coming down. I don't think it's too serious. I hope not anyhow. And they're taking a look at him. Trainer Don Sparks is out there working on the pistol. And... Watch again, Tricky steps on his foot here, reaching in, trying to get the ball right there. And he turned his ankle a little bit, but he's not hurt. Not bad. Might have slept, uh, suffered a floor burn sliding like that, too. Here he is at the free throw line. And he just keeps scoring on that 61 points. He misses this one here. He's had a good night at the foul line, too. He's 14 of 16 from the free throw line. Here's Tom McMillan spinning all the way around on Griffin. Dean Meminger hits the board and it goes up and in from Tom McMillan. Meminger put it on the underside of the rim on his attempt. 111 to 89, New Orleans. Jags up by 22. You'd think that they might want to rest this one now, but he just keeps on going. Here he fires away, no good this time. Nate Williams trying for an offensive rebound and runs out of room. I think Elgin Baylor's career high was something around 71 points. He might want Pete, Pete to break his record. Lonnie Shelton looking for a pass. Tries to get it to Bradley. Almost stolen by Williams. Bill passes inside to Meminger. Dean makes a move to Tom McMillan. Blocked by Otto Moore. Recovered by Griffin. Fire it up front. Off the fingertips of Williams. And the Knicks get it back. Now E.C. Coleman, number 12, checks in for New Orleans. He will spell Griffin. That's one good rebounder uh, replacing another. And a good defensive ball player, E.C. Coleman. Five minutes remaining in the ball game. Knicks have trailed it since an explosion early in the first quarter. And particularly in the second quarter when New Orleans outscored 34-17. Nicky Burden goes in, drops it off to Shelton. Lonnie throws it away. The shot clock was down to three. The Knicks had to get a shot up, but a bad pass spoils any attempt. 25 turnovers for the Knicks tonight. And the story now is how many points will Pete Maravich wind up with? 61 as of this moment. And counting. Here he goes, and on the other guy with number seven. Pitches off. Mo Howard, way up and off. Air ball. Dickie Burton has the ball knocked away. Lonnie Shelton tries to follow, can't do it. Otto Moore's pass out is blocked, but the Jazz recover it. Here's the pistol. Sees some daylight, goes in, lay it up. Good, no, a charge. A charging foul on pistol. And that is his fifth personal foul. Well, you watch Pistol here, he makes a move. Tricky Burton trying to make a steal on him here. Tom McMillan moving over, in position. Tough call, could have gone either way, but it went against Maravich. 
Here's the ball knocked out of bounds, and the Knicks have lost it. to come up and take every shot now and the whistle offensive foul on Tiki Burton and the Knickerbockers are taking a timeout with 3.53 left in the fourth quarter to score the Jazz 111 and the Knicks 89 3.50 left in the ball game Rich Kelly is in for New Orleans the ball knocked away no, Dean working hard on defense that time. He was fronting Pistol Pete, and that ball came in and went off of uh, Dean's hands, they call. They're looking for him. Aaron James inside. Look at that move! Maravich backed into Meminger. What a basket. He's got 63. He put the right spin on that ball. He sure did. Dickey Burton fires up and hits a Dickey with a long one. Dickey has contributed seven points. It is 113 to 91. New Orleans on top. The crowd rooting for Pete every time he comes up the floor. Nick's and trying to double team him now. Dean has the task of trying to contain him, and that's a hard job to take. Here he uses the pick and scores again. And look at his teammates rooting for him. Look at Coleman. Coleman leaped into the air when he scored. 65 for the pistol. Dickey Burden doing his pistol Pete imitation. <laughs> 115 to 93. The Jazz are going to pistol every time down the floor now. They're trying to get picks for him now. They're no longer asking him to bring the ball up the floor. Here's a foul. Dean Leminger. And free throws coming for Maravich. Well, this is some night. We've got 248 left, and he does indeed have a chance to get into these 70s. For the first time tonight, number 11, Ron Behagen, into the ball game. He replaces Coleman. When Ron came in the game, he came in to congratulate him on his great shooting performance this, e this evening. Pistol is doing it good. 66 points. Loose ball foul on Behagen. Andy Walker coming into the game, replacing Mo Howard. Andy Walker. A seventh round draft choice from Niagara, the lowest drafted player to make it in the NBA this year. Tom McMillan, no good, and a rebound for Aaron James. He will try to get the ball to Maravich. Oh, wait a minute, you guys, you're not supposed to do that. That was a basket for Aaron James. You're supposed to go to pistol every time down the floor. 118 to 93, I guess they just couldn't help themselves. And Dean Meminger gets himself a field goal. Are yelling for Pete to get the ball. Behagen, goaltending, scored for Behagen. Tom McMillan blocked it on the way down. 2.14 remaining. The pistol with 66 right now. Here's a basket for him if he can convert. for Maravich, and a steal. Look at him fight for this ball. The Pistols doing it all. A great ball game. Traveling. And the crowd is going wild here at the Superdome. I wonder what kind of contract he's going to ask for after this ball game. Well, he ought to call his agent in right away. Bonnie Shelton with a dramatic stuff shot. 122 to 97. Jazz on top, a minute 45 to go, and it's just a question of how many the pistol will score. Here he is with the basketball. He takes the shot. No good. He's forcing a little bit. There's no question about that, but he's making most of them anyway. And he has to be tired right now. Sure. Tiki Burden. Out the pistol. Goes on a drive. He's out of the ball game. They called him with an offensive foul, and that will foul him out of the ball game with 118 to go. Listen to the hand he gets with 68 points.
to work, and we have a layup and a foul on Kelly. Well, Ronnie Shelton fighting hard on the offensive boards. He had a good shot, missed, followed with another one. But Pistol Pete getting a tremendous round of applause for a tremendous performance by Pistol Pete Maravich, 68 points. And his father, Press Maravich, is undoubtedly here at the game. He is a, a scout for the Jazz. Well, that free throw by Lonnie puts the Knicks at the century point. They are announcing that it's the highest total by a guard in the history of the National Basketball Association. Well, you got to give it to me. Put on a performance this evening. 122 to 100. Up front to Dean Meminger, and Dino gets the layup. Dean Meminger. Only two men in the history of the NBA have ever scored more. Elgin Baylor and Will Will Chamberlain. Chamberlain. Well, they probably heard that. They announced only two players have ever scored more than Pete did tonight, Baylor and Chamberlain. 122 to 104 the score right now. Steele up to Tiki. Gets Aaron James in the air, and there'll be a foul on James. 31 seconds left in the ball game. An incredible performance by Pistol Pete Maravich and the 11,033 fans here in New Orleans saw it. Yeah, I was at Hershey, Pennsylvania the night that Wilt got his hundred. As a youngster, I lived in that area at that time, and uh, I was just there as a fan. And in the meantime, in the years since that happened, I've run into thousands of people who said they saw that game, and there were only about 5,000 people there. Well, I wasn't there. I was in the Eastern League playing that day, but I wasn't the guard when Archer got his 71. I think Willie North got about 40 or 50 something that night for New York. Well, we'll both be able to say we were here for this one. Meminger and Howard fighting for the ball. Out of bounds off Meminger, and the Jazz will play it in. 27 seconds to go. Here's Ron Behagen muscling around Tom McMillan, and an offensive foul Behagen. The old Oscar Robertson move. Using his left arm to hook the Robert defensive ball player, coming baseline for the layup. 122-105 lead for New Orleans. The Knicks scored the first four points in the ball game, but then uh, after nine straight points by the Jazz, the Knicks never really caught up again. Tom McMillan, Tommy with 16. Five seconds left in the ball game. Aaron James, Walker, that scores. Score the basket by Walker, and that's the ball game. The final score. 124 to 107, New Orleans wins it. We'll be back with a recap after this. Breaking down the incredible game by Pete Maravich tonight. 27 field goals, 14 free throws for 68 points. I played for the fans, there was no doubt about that. Here goes Maravich. But the first thing I played for was the win. They called him Pistol Pete. College basketball had never seen a scoring machine like Pete Maravich. Playing for his father, Press, at Louisiana State University from 1968 through 70, the Pistol completed his amazing career as college basketball's most prolific scorer. With his floppy socks and dazzling ball handling, Pete Maravich put pizzazz into the game of basketball. Whether it was from behind the back or through the legs, double pump or one-handed, the result was the same. Pistol Pete Maravich, college basketball's greatest showman. 1970 saw Maravich become college basketball's all-time scoring leader. To do this, he had to beat every defense. There have been many defenses that have been thrown up against me. This has caused me to have some kind of movement, changes, try to free myself so I can do some scoring. The prototype of the new breed of all American, Pete Maravich. One of the most widely celebrated collegiate hoopsters in history, Pete Maravich moved from LSU to the Atlanta Hawks in 1970. He was always a scintillating ball handler, and an appealing touch of cockiness also helped make Maravich an accomplished showman. 
Pistol Pete could fire dead-eye jumpers from deep in the backcourt, or else he'd blast to the hoop and shoot a hole in the most forbidding defense. But Pete loved to run, and he was at his best squeezing the trigger of a fast break. When Maravich was dealt to New Orleans in 1974, his string music was the syncopation in the jazz offense. Then in 1977, Pete's crowd-pleasing heroics peaked with a 68-point extravaganza against the Knicks on his way to becoming the league's leading scorer. Yet throughout his glorious 10-year career, Maravich always yearned to play on a winning ball club, and he would gladly have traded all his bullseyes for one championship ring. Even so, Pistol Pete Maravich was a quick-draw artist whose hot shots burned defenders and made the net dance. <laughs> 